Good evening, Cleveland and Columbus sports fans. You're tuned in live to the show of the land with Jen B on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Tonight, we are going to talk about the MLB leading Cleveland Guardians. We will also hit on Triple A Columbus Clippers and Double A Akron Rubber Ducks. Then we will move on to some NBA playoffs with the 2 0 Cleveland Cavaliers. We will talk about some hockey. How did the Blue Jackets wrap up their season? And the AHL playoff. Cleveland Monsters. We will also talk about the Columbus Fury, the most confusing team in Pro Volleyball Federation. We will talk about the MIVA champion, Ohio State Buckeyes men's volleyball team. And we will wrap up the show with the Columbus crew and the Cleveland Browns, so stay tuned. Before we get started with the sports news tonight, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League champion Lake Elsinore Storm, the single A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all brisket jerky has gluten-free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, is low in sugar, and high in protein. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other planet. You can follow them on Instagram at Planet Jerky and can place your orders on their website, planetjerky.net. All orders of $50 or more get free shipping, so place your order today. Our second sponsor is Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B. You just finished your very own wedding or baby shower invitations and you're looking for that extra special touch? Maybe you just wrote a letter to a relative or a friend and you want to add to their smile when they receive it. Then seal the deal with Cecilia's handmade sealing wax stamps for your invitations, letters, and gifts. You bring the deal, we'll bring the seal. And you can follow them on Instagram at seal the deal underscore wax stamps. And you can also find them on Facebook, seal the deal wax stamps. Now a little about IE Sports Radio. For the last almost 10 years, IE Sports Radio has brought you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at IE Sports Radio on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to keep up with the latest in sports and with all of our shows. Also, check out our daily updated website, iesportsradio.com. For sports news, the IE Sports Radio blog, you can find my latest blog there. Our Hall of Fame, Fans of the Month, pages dedicated to each podcast, our IE Sports Radio community forum, and stop by the shop and check out the merch. Thank you for making IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. All right, now for some sports talk. So how about those Guardians? 
16 and 6. Best start since, I don't, I don't even know, like 1999 or something like that. But it is also an equivalent start to the 1948 Guardians, or Indians, I'm sorry, it was the Indians then, who won the World Series. So, we can hope, can't we? That's all we have in Cleveland is hope. <laughs> hope. Broken hearts. Tears. A river of tears in Cleveland. That once caught on fire. But we won't get into that. On to the Guardians. <laughs> on Tuesday. The Guardians took on the Boston Red Sox in Boston. The starting lineup was left field, Stephen Kwan, second base, Andre Jimenez, third base, Jose Ramirez, first base, Josh Naylor, catcher, Bo Naylor, right field, Ramon Laureano, DH, Will Brennan, shortstop, Gabriel Arias, center field, Tyler Freeman, and starting pitcher, Tanner Bybee. Tanner Bybee pitched five innings, had one earned run and three strikeouts. In the top of the second, Will Brennan had an RBI double. Gabriel Arias followed up with another RBI double. Bottom of the fourth, the Red Sox had a solo home run. Top of the fifth, Tyler Freeman had a solo home run. Then Jose Ramirez had a sacrifice fly. And Andres Jimenez scored on an error. Bottom of the sixth. The Red Sox had a solo home run, a two-run home run, and then a two-RBI double. Top of the ninth, Jose Ramirez had a sack fly, and at the end of nine, it was tied. So we go to extra innings. Top of the tenth, Gabriel Arias had an RBI single, and bottom of the tenth, the Red Sox had a sacrifice fly so we remain tied so on to the 11th where Jose Ramirez had an RBI single and Esteban Florial had a two RBI single and the Guardians won 10 to 7. Stephen Kwan is the first Cleveland hitter in Guardians slash Indians history with 18 plus runs and 29 plus hits in the first 17 games of the season. So congratulations to Stephen Kwan on that accomplishment. On Wednesday, the Guardians again took on the Boston Red Sox and the starting lineup was left field Stephen Kwan, second base Andre Jimenez, third base Jose Ramirez, first base Josh Naylor. D.H. Will Brennan, right field, Estevan Florial, center field, Gabriel Arias, which was weird because he usually plays in the infield, but, you know, it worked. Catcher, Austin Hedges, and shortstop, Brian Rocchio. Starting pitcher was Ben Lively, and in his first start of the season, he pitched five innings, had seven strikeouts in two earned runs. In the bottom of the third, <clears throat> the Red Sox scored on a balk. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Nobody, including the announcers, had any clue why it was called a balk. Finally figured it out the following day. It had something to do with him not notifying the umpires that he was pitching straight from his <clears throat> stance or something. I, I don't I don't even understand it, but he didn't do the typical balk that we're used to. It had something to do with him not notifying the umpires of something that he was supposed to notify them before of before the batter came up to bat. In the bottom of the fourth, the Red Sox had a solo home run and <clears throat> that's all she wrote. The Guardians lost two to nothing. Tanner Hawk for the Red Sox pitched a full game and a shutout so congratulations to him <clears throat> but boo 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 
Uh, the Guardians optioned Wes Parsons to Triple A Columbus. He was, is a pitcher. Sam Henches is has started his rehab pitching stint with uh, the Akron Rubber Ducks. Gavin Williams is uh, beginning his rehab stint. I'm not sure if he's going to be in Triple A Columbus or Double A Akron. But he is expected to return to the Guardians in early May. The Guardians traded cash considerations to the San Diego Padres for right-handed pitcher Pedro Avila. And he was added to the Major League roster. Ben Lively was activated from the 15-day IL. And Xavier Curry was optioned back to AAA Columbus. And Eli Morgan was put on the 15-day IL with a shoulder injury. Angel Martinez is on the 60-day IL with a broken hand. So, yeah. The the injuries are uh, starting to starting to add up a little bit, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we will get some people back soon. Looks like Gavin Williams and Sam Henches are both headed in the right direction so that will definitely help the pitching crew but we will probably see some uh, changes to the starting rotation when that happens as Gavin Williams is a starter Um, Sam Hatches is a bullpen pitcher so most likely just somebody else in the bullpen will be sent down possibly Ben Lively we'll see Thursday the Guardians again took on the Boston Red Sox, and the starting lineup was second base, Andres Jimenez, left field, David Fry, DH, Jose Ramirez, first base, Josh Naylor, catcher, Bo Naylor, right field, Ramon Laureano, third base, Gabriel Arias, and shortstop, Brian Rocchio. Starting pitcher was Cookie Carrasco, and he went 5.2 innings. With two earned runs and five strikeouts. And that was his best start so far. So hopefully he will continue to improve on that. Bottom of the first, the Red Sox scored on a fielder's choice. Top of the third, Andres Jimenez had an RBI single. Top of the fourth, Josh Naylor had an RBI single. Top of the fifth, Andres Jimenez had another RBI single. And Jose Ramirez had an RBI fielder's choice. Top of the sixth, Ramon Laureano had an RBI single. Bottom of the sixth, the Red Sox had a two RBI triple. And then they scored on a balk again. But the Guardians still ended up winning 5-4. to four, And Emmanuel Classe recorded his fifth save of the season. Friday, the Guardians started a series against the Oakland A's starting lineup left field Stephen Kwan second base Andres Jimenez third base Jose Ramirez first base Josh Naylor right field Will Brennan center field Tyler Freeman catcher Bo Naylor DH Estevan Florio shortstop Brian Rocchio Tristan McKenzie got the start at pitcher and he went five innings one earned run and six strikeouts. Also his best start of the season so far. Top of the first, Oakland had a solo home run. Bottom of the second, Tyler Freeman had a two-run home run. Bottom of the fifth, Stephen Kwan had a two-RBI double. Then Andres Jimenez had a two-RBI single. And Jose Ramirez had an RBI single. Bottom of the eighth, Josh Naylor had a solo home run. And then Tyler Freeman scored on an error, and Esteban Florio had an RBI single. Top of the ninth, Oakland had a solo home run, but it was nowhere near enough. The Guardians won 10-2. Saturday, the Guardians again took on the Oakland A's. Starting lineup, left field, Stephen Kwan. First base, David Fry. Third base, Jose Ramirez, DH, Josh Naylor. Right field, Ramon Laureano. Center field, Tyler Freeman. Second base, Gabriel Arias. Catcher, Austin Hedges. Shortstop, Brian Rocchio. 
Starting pitcher was Logan Allen, and he went 5.1 innings with three earned runs and four strikeouts. Bottom of the first, Jose Ramirez had an RBI double, and then Ramon Laureano also had an RBI double. Top of the fifth, the A's had two solo home runs. Bottom of the fifth, Josh Naylor had a two-run home run. Top of the sixth, the A's scored on a sacrifice fly. Bottom of the seventh, Josh Naylor had an RBI single. Tyler Freeman had an RBI single. And the Guardians won 6-3, to three, and Class A recorded his sixth save of the season. Sunday, they again took on the A's. Starting lineup left field, Stephen Kwan, second base, Andres Jimenez, DH, Josh Naylor, first base, David Fry, right field, Will Brennan, center field, Ramon Laureano, catcher, Bo Naylor, third base, Gabriel Arias, shortstop, Brian Rocchio, Starting pitcher was Tanner Bybee, and he went 5.2 innings, two earned runs, and eight strikeouts. Also, his best start of the season. So it looks like the pitchers are starting to get their groove. Bottom of the second, Will Brennan hit a solo home run. Bottom of the third, Andres Jimenez had an RBI single. Top of the fourth, the A's hit a solo home run. Bottom of the fourth, Gabriel Arias had an RBI single. Top of the sixth, the A's had an RBI single. Bottom of the seventh, Josh Naylor had a three RBI double. And the Guardians won 6-2 to two for their first series sweep of the season. Their next games are tonight through Thursday against the Boston Red Sox in Cleveland. And the game just started tonight, and it is currently the top of the first 0-0. Zero to zero. And then starting on Friday, they will take on the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta, and that series will go through Sunday. The Guardians currently hold the best record in Major League Baseball and are up by three and a half games over the Kansas City Royals in the AL Central and a half a game better than the NL leading Atlanta Braves. So a very telling series coming up against the Atlanta Braves. We'll see how that plays out. Now for our minor league teams. Triple A Columbus Clippers went two and four against the Buffalo Bisons this week. Their next games are Tuesday through Sunday against the Syracuse Mets. Number two prospect Kyle Manzardo has had seven hits, which includes three home runs in his last three games. So it looks like he's finding his bat, which was the concern. So it is quite possible we may see him being called up to Cleveland in the near future. The Rubber Ducks also went 2-4 against Erie. Their next games are Tuesday through Sunday at Altoona. And for them, number 14 Guardians prospect Khalil Watson has hit safely in each of his past five games, including his first home run of the season on Thursday. That is going to wrap things up for all things baseball. So I am going to take a short break and get something to drink because my voice is not cooperating with me right now. And then I will be back to talk some hockey with the Blue Jackets and the AHL North Division champion, Cleveland Monsters. So stay tuned to the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. 
This is Kale Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply always want to reach out to our fans again the sin city sports show presented by ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, Natalia's Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that are sports. Before we get into the hockey, let's give a shout out to the chat. We have Larry B, the head honcho of IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. He is also co-host of the Sports Couples the sports couple perspectives with his wife Cecilia B and he is host of three and out three and out college edition and the defining moment so be sure to check out all those shows Ralph Calise says Jen B all Cleveland girl have a great show let's go thank you Ralph he is the host of the Yenzer Report for all that is Pittsburgh sports. He was on right before me at 5 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to check out the Yenzer Report. And then we have Taryn Rodriguez. He says, how about Ohio State men's volleyball? We will get to that in the next segment. And then he says, O-H-I-O. He is host of A Set Point, 
our volleyball show and also the SoCal Supreme Sports Show for all that is Southern California sports. So be sure to check out those two shows. And Adam Karnick just joined us. He is the host of Chi Town Weekly for all that is Chicago sports and co-host of The Neutral Zone, our hockey show. So be sure to check those out. And let's now talk some hockey. Tuesday, the Columbus Blue Jackets took on the Carolina Hurricanes. Luca Del Belbelouz scored a goal, his first NHL goal. Zach Wierenski had an assist on that goal and set a record for assist by a defenseman in a single season at 45 for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Zach Wierenski then scored a goal and that was his 300th career point. Then the Canes scored a goal and then they tied it up. Then James Malatesta scored a goal. And the Blue Jackets were up 3-1 to one at the end of the first period. And the Canes tied it up on a power play. Then Johnny Goudreau scored a goal and the Blue Jackets were up 4-3 to three at the end of two. Alex Nylander and Zach Wierenski recorded goals in the third period, and the Blue Jackets won 6-3. to three. Zach Wierenski was named the community MVP for the Blue Jackets due to his work in the Columbus community with first responders, military heroes, children battling cancer, and underprivileged youth. The Ohio State women's hockey team were special guests at the Blue Jackets' final game of the season. Zach Wierenski had four points on the night, which tied the Columbus Blue Jacket record for most points in a single season by a defenseman. Alex Nylander recorded his 11th goal since joining the Blue Jackets after the trade with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And following the game, the Blue Jackets reassigned Nick Blankenberg, David Juracek, Luca Del Belbelouz, James Malatesta, Mikhail Putia, and Jet Greaves back to the Cleveland Monsters. They just today signed their 2023 fourth round draft pick Luca Pinelli to a three-year entry-level contract. He ranked third in the Ontario Hockey League with 48 goals this season. Now for some monsters because the Blue Jackets are done done. Uh, Trey Flick Fix Wolanski and Jake Christensen were named to the AHL second all-star team. Friday, the Monsters took on the Rochester Americans and won 3-2 in overtime. Goals were scored by Cole Clayton and Stanislav Sposal, who had two, including the winner in overtime. Jet Greaves set the franchise record for wins by a goaltender in a single season at 28. Saturday, they took on the Toronto Marlies and won 4-3. to Justin Pearson recorded three goals and Tyler Engel recorded one. Tyler Engel reached 100 AHL points. It was Pearson's first career hat trick. Jet Greaves tied Calvin Pickard for most wins in all-time franchise history at 60. And then Sunday, they again took on the Toronto Marlies and won 3-1. to one. It was Tyler Angle's 200th game. Goals were scored by Trey Fix Wolanski, who had two, and Roman Akan. And with that win, the Monsters clinched the North Division for the first time in franchise history and are going on to the AHL playoffs to play for the Calder Cup 
They have a first round bye, so they wait the winners of the wild card round. Jet Greaves was named AHL Player of the Week with 97 saves in three games. Defenseman Old Julian Bjorvik <sighs> Holm was assigned to the Monsters, and the Monsters subsequently, after the Blue Jackets signed him, signed Luca Pinelli to an amateur tryout contract. So, the Monsters will be awaiting their opponents in the second round of the AHL playoffs. So, we will wait and see who that will end up being. And then uh, we will be cheering them on as they make their push for the Calder Cup. The Blue Jackets are now in the off season and are working hard to find a new GM. Um, I don't expect that they will make any other moves prior to hiring said GM. As uh, they have said that they want the GM to make all decisions regarding the roster. So hopefully they will have somebody hired in the next couple of weeks so that the GM can have some prep time for the draft coming up in June and free agency shortly thereafter. Um, there have been some rumors that the Blue Jackets are going to trade Patrick Laine. Um, I have not yet seen any reputable sources for that rumor so take that with a grain of salt um they do have quite a few free agents so uh it'll be interesting to see what the new uh gm chooses to do with this team and whether or not uh pascal vincent will remain the head coach he did say at the the wrap-up interviews that he wants to be here and he hopes that the new GM chooses to retain him but it is up to the new GM shout out to Patty Bax who just joined us in the chat she is the host of the Buffalo Huddle which will be right after me at 7 p.m. Eastern um so we're kind of uh, in a holding pattern as far as hockey is concerned. Waiting on a GM for the Blue Jackets and waiting on an opponent for the Monsters. So that is going to wrap things up for all that is hockey. I am going to take another quick break. And when I come back, we will be talking about the 2-0 and Cleveland Cavaliers and the NBA playoffs. We will talk about the Columbus Fury and the Ohio State Buckeye men's volleyball team. So stay tuned for that. And I will be right back with the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. sports fans are you looking for a sports show that maybe isn't 100 about sports then you might want to check out the sports couple perspectives right here on ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports most sports shows cover only scores and stats and while we're not opposed to that we dig a little deeper into sports issues and some of the hottest topics in athletics in addition to sports we take a journey through my neck of the woods pop culture with movie reviews of both sports and non-sports films speaking of pop culture make sure to participate in our game nights where we quiz each other on our specialties and you the listeners can win ie sports radio apparel we always have a great time learning more about each other's worlds one show at a time so join us each week on the sports couple perspectives right here on ie sports radio your directory for all that is sports
Sports fans, do you like teams that are tough, cities that are tougher, and fan bases that are passionate about their teams? How about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Shy town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox. We'll cover them all, plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing, and we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Now we're going to get into some basketball and some volleyball. <sighs> the Cleveland Cavaliers made the playoffs. They whoop, made the playoffs as the number four seed. And they are facing the number five seed, Orlando Magic. But before we get to that, former Cavaliers... Craig Elo and Tyrone Hill are being inducted into the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame. So congratulations to those former players. Game one of the series against the Magic was on Saturday. Ty Jerome, Craig Porter Jr., and Dean Wade were all ruled out. Amoni Bates, Isaiah Mobley, Pete Nance are all ineligible to play in the postseason as they are on two-way contracts. The starting five were Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Max Struess, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. At the end of one, the Cavs were up 33-26. to At the half, they were up 53-41. to At the end of three, they were up 73-58, to and they won 97 to 83. Donovan Mitchell led with 30 points. Jarrett Allen and Evan Mobley both recorded double doubles. Jarrett Allen with 16 points and 19 rebounds. Evan Mobley with 16 points and 11 rebounds. And game two was last night. Ty Jerome, Craig Porter Jr., and Dean Wade all still out. Starting five were Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Max Struess, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. At the end of one, the Cavs were up 30-18. to 18. At the half, they were up 58-44. to 44. At the end of three, they were up 80-65. to 65. Mo Wagner fouled, fouled out with 2 minutes and 55 seconds left in the fourth. And the Cavs won 96 to 86. Donovan Mitchell led with 23 points. Jarrett Allen had a double-double with 16 points and 20 rebounds. That is the second highest number of rebounds in a playoff series or in a playoff game by a Cleveland Cavalier. The first spot is held by Kevin Love, who recorded 21 in a game in the playoffs while he was a Cleveland Cavalier. Game three will be Thursday in Orlando and game four Saturday in Orlando. Game five will be back in Cleveland next Tuesday if it is needed. My thoughts are it shouldn't be needed the way the Cavs have been playing, but you can't count out the magic when they're playing at home. So we will see what happens in games three and four. I do expect the Cavs will drop one to win the series at home, but we will see. 
as of now, they have not been down a single minute in the first two games of the series. They started out winning and they finished winning and never gave up the lead. So in either game. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in Orlando. But as of right now, it's looking pretty good for the Cavs. Now that second series, most likely against the Boston Celtics, unless Miami pulls something out of their butts and goes on a tear, um, should be interesting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. So we will uh, we'll see what happens in Orlando, but uh, I expect this series to be over in five, if not four. But you know, stranger things have happened. Can't rule anything out, especially when it comes to the Cavs. God knows somebody could get hurt or something. <sighs> I'm knocking on wood. I'm knocking on wood. I promise. I'm knocking. I'm knocking. All right. And Adam says, Mo Wagner, he played for that school up north, right? Honestly, I'm not sure, but I'll look right now and see. Probably that would make sense because he's been quite a little pistol in uh, Orlando Magic. Before the Magic, he played for... That team up north, which I will not say. You are correct, Adam. (sighs) That explains so much. So much. But anyhow, let's get on to some volleyball. (sighs) The Columbus Fury, the most infuriating team. Wednesday, they played the Vegas Thrill in Vegas. And they lost set one, 18 to 25. And then they lost set two, 23 to 25. And then they lost set three, 18 to 25. Completing the sweep and losing three to nothing. Regan Cooper was out with an illness that partially explains it, but yeesh, not good. But then, on Friday, the Fury took on the Atlanta Vibe in Columbus. They lost set one, 23 to 25. And then they won set two, 25 to 20. They won set three, 25 to 22. And they won set four, 25 to 21. Kendall Kip led with 25 kills. Janasia Moore had 10 kills and 14 digs. And the team actually is starting to look like they're getting their chemistry back. So we'll see. They've got two matches coming up this week. One on Friday against the Orlando Valkyries and one on Sunday against the Grand Rapids Rise. The Grand Rapid Rise has the Fury's number. So if they can manage to pull out a win against the Rise, that would be amazing. But I'm telling you right now, this team is the most confusing team in Pro Volleyball Federation. Like, they lose to the worst team in the league and then turn around and beat the best team in the league. In the same week, two days apart. Like, what the heck? What is up with this team? But we'll see how things go this week in those two games on Friday and Sunday. Hopefully they can get a couple more wins under their belt. Otherwise, I don't know. But, I mean, they have been very up and down. Very, very up and down. But they have also had a lot of roster shakeups. So hopefully they're done with that and they can uh, start to figure things out. Now for some Ohio State men's volleyball. 
Ohio State was in the MIVA tournament. And last week we talked about them winning the first round. So this week we will talk about the second round. They played on Saturday, number four seed Lindenwood. Set one, they lost 20 to 25. Set two, they won 25 to 17. Set three, they won 25 to 18. Set four, they won 25 to 16, taking the match three to one and becoming the MIBA champ. And with that win, secured a spot in the NCAA men's volleyball tournament. Michael Wright was named MVP of the MIVA tournament. Jacob Pasture and Shane Wetzel were named all MIVA tournament team members. So congratulations to those three gentlemen. Ohio State is the sixth seed in the NCAA tournament, and they will face the third seed, Grand Canyon, in the quarterfinals next Tuesday, April 30th. So good luck to the Buckeyes in the NCAA volleyball tournament. That's not what it's actually called, but I don't I don't remember what it's actually called. And Taryn said last night on set point that he is calling it the NCAA volleyball tournament. So that is what I am calling it. Because that just makes it easier to remember. And it makes sense because that's what it is. But that is going to wrap things up for all things volleyball and basketball. I'm going to take another quick break and then we will wrap the show up with the Columbus crew and the Browns. So stay tuned to the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's going on, football fans? This is me, Boy Larrabee, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head-to-head primetime face-offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it. Hey, sports fans. Are you in the market for Florida sports or just keeping up with the latest in the panhandle? Palm Tree Sports is a dedicated audio hub to all things sports in the Sunshine State. We cover current events, big news, heavily favored opinions all across the NFL, NBA, MLB, and so much more. So come check us out every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a down south education on Florida sports and athletics. It's hosted by yours truly, Corey Pujols, and it's powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sport. Quick update on that Guardians game. It is 0-0 at the bottom of the third. So, the Columbus crew extended head coach Wilfried Nancy 
I have no idea how long because I couldn't find any information on the extension other than the announcement that they extended him. So congratulations to him. And I guess we will see how long he remains the head coach. The crew traded Philip Quentin to Real Salt Lake for $200,000 general allocation money. And Saturday, they took on the Portland Timbers. Saturday also happened to be Cucho Hernandez's 25th birthday. The Timbers scored at the 10-minute mark. And that was the only goal in the first half. So the crew was down one to nothing at the half. Cucho Hernandez scored a goal at the 51st minute. Then the Timbers scored a second goal at the 57th minute. And Steven Morera scored a goal at the 74th minute, bringing it to a 2-2 draw. So, the crew maintained their record of not losing at home. They didn't win, but they didn't lose. Steven Morera was named to the team of the match day, starting 11 for match day 10. And the crew's next matches are Wednesday against Monterey in the CONCACAF Championship semifinals. And then Saturday, in their normal MLS schedule, they will take on CF Montreal. So good luck to the crew, especially tomorrow in that CONCACAF match against Monterey and they will again take on Monterey I believe it's next Wednesday for leg two of that series and we're not talking about the monsters we're talking about the Browns the Browns signed offensive lineman Jermaine Ifedi and Today, it was announced that Kevin Stefanski and the Stefanski family have launched the Keepers Foundation. The foundation focuses on serving underprivileged kids in Northeast Ohio. So you can check them out at the keepersfoundation.org. And of course, we have the NFL draft coming up on Thursday. So what a what will the Cleveland Browns do? Only Andrew Barry knows the answer to that. The Browns first pick isn't until pick 54 in the second round. Um, I expect them to go best player available. They may possibly trade back to pick up a fourth round pick because they don't have one. But it is also possible that they could package up some picks and try and move up. I don't know. We will see what they do. They don't have any glaring needs on the on the starting roster. Uh, they could use some O-line depth. Uh, Joe Batonio is not getting any younger. Jedrick Wills is on the last year of his contract. So we'll see what they what they do there. Um, they could probably use some linebacker and safety help, especially with the new special teams rules for kickoffs. Um, I think, so they could use some depth, um, depending on their feelings about Siaki Ika, who they drafted last season, possibly some defensive tackle help. And, of course, can always use those star positions on offense, wide receiver and running back. Um, I don't think that they really need to go running back um, since they signed uh, Deontay Foreman and uh, Naheem Hines in free agency, but we'll see what they do. I've seen some rumors that it is possible that the Browns will be cutting Jerome Ford. Uh, They do also still have Pierre Strong on the roster at running back. Uh, Sounds like 
Uh, Nick Chubb is probably not going to be ready to start the season. I've seen rumors that it could be November. I've seen rumors that he'll start the season on the PUP list and be good to go by week five. So, you know, it's still a holding game. Where Nick Chubb is concerned, it will depend, as Andrew Barry said, how things go over the next three months. But the Browns currently have pick 54 in round two, pick 50, or 85 in round three, 156 in round five, 206 in round six, and 227 and 243 in round seven. Andrew Barry generally doesn't use seventh round picks, so I expect him to use those in some sort of trade, either to move up or possibly for a player or two, um, possibly get some picks for next year, whatever the case may be. But I don't expect that the Browns will do many picks over the fifth round, but uh, we'll see because they really just do not have the roster space for them. But uh, that is going to wrap things up. So let me cue the music. That is all for tonight. Thank you for joining me, Jen B, on the show of the land. Be sure to follow me on X, Instagram, and threads at Believe Land Girl and on TikTok at Jen.BelieveLand. Also, follow the show for daily updates on Cleveland and Columbus Sports News on X at Show of the Land IE. Next up is the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax with all that is Buffalo Sports. Be sure to catch me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on the Show of the Land for more on Cleveland and Columbus Sports right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Have a great night, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs>